Man, I, 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 re I recorded like 10 minutes worth of, oh my god, I lost it all. Oh, you, you who clicked on the video, if you're watching this, you think you can probably learn a thing or two from this. God, I hope so, but I'll be the first to admit I have no idea what I'm talking about. I've been asked for a very long time on how to teach people to draw or stylize their art, and I kind of never really know what to say. I'm not a teacher, I never actually looked up tips on how to draw or tutorials, any of that stuff, so I'm gonna try my best, but basically I'm positive there's better videos out there. This is all from my experience as someone who was basically just left on their own and had to decide what they wanted to do by themselves. Also, hey, this, this video will not be on character design, that's the next one. This is just about the technical aspects of drawing as a whole, like picking line art and color choices, shading. It's basically just me talking about suggestions and hoping someone sees an option for a drawing step that they like and try something new. Stylizing art is such a vague topic that there's nothing I can say that would apply to everyone. Whatever you're going for, you have to already fully know what it is, and my instructions can help to kind of get you to a better understanding of what you're going for, but otherwise, um, I can't just say some magic words that'll make you suddenly change your art style, so if you don't mind that, uh, I'm gonna keep moving on. It takes trial and error, and I think this is why I never really know what to say when people ask me how to help them out. It just depends on who you are, what you draw, and what you're hoping to draw. Personally, the biggest, most important piece of advice I could give is don't be like me and be- I'm not gonna clap. Don't be like me and be too stubborn to get tips or inspiration for like 13 years of your life. Look for artists who give you inspiration. It's hard to develop your art style to get to a place where you actually like it when you don't even know what it is you're going for. Depending on what style you're working towards, Go on DeviantArt, maybe Tumblr, or just Google image search. Uh, if you don't even know what you're looking for, look anyway. Just look up things that you tend to like, and things that were tagged with that will show up. Or you can just go on the homepage and just start clicking on things until eventually you get to something you like. The most useful tip I can give for finding artists you like is when you find one, you'll find a whole lot. If you're on DeviantArt, look at the sidebar to see related pictures to the one you like or people's collections. Many times they'll be labeled inspiration or inspo, and you can look through those galleries to find more similar artists. If you're on Tumblr, check the post notes to see who reblogged the picture. Click on the people who did reblog it and look through the other art they posted. This works best when the picture isn't fan art, otherwise people just reblog it not because the art style is nice and suits them, it's just because it's something they like, so... If you're on another website, it might be a little bit harder, but just tweak the instructions I gave accordingly and you should be able to get the same result. Uh, as for me, and if you're going for a similar art style, my main art inspirations are Kelly Ficarra, Victoria Vincent, Magna Galena, Jules Mihalix, Jack Stauber, and Mega Dinkoid. There's more, and they kind of change like every month, but I'd be here all day if I mentioned all the artists I like. Plus, some of them just vanish off the face of the earth, so yeah. The cartoons to get my inspiration from would be Steven Universe, only for the backgrounds, because the character models aren't that great. Bowmasters 9009, Rocco's Modern Life, Song of the Sea, Anything by Gendy Tartakovsky, Into the Spider-Verse, and MFKZ. Although my old styles were heavily based on Flapjack and Chowder. And uh, a huge inspiration for me as a kid was Ren and Stimpy, but uh, we don't talk about that anymore. Basically, just look at an artist you like. Kind of try and think about, what do I like about this artist? What do they have that I don't have? I like a lot of artists that I don't really want to draw inspiration from for my own style, so sometimes you'll think about it and you'll come up with nothing you can use. But when you find that person, it's just like, Oh, it's because I want to draw thick lines like that, or I really like how they shade with screen tones, maybe I should try that. Try it on your own and see what happens. Chances are it won't really turn out the way you want it, but sometimes seeing a change in your own art or making a mistake leads to something entirely new. Just don't straight up copy anyone or trace, obviously. Tracing can be okay if it's like royalty-free images or something or reference photos, but when it comes to other people's artwork who most likely do not want to be traced, just don't. And unless they outright say it's okay to copy or trace or whatever, just don't do it. It's never a safe bet, like what person actually wants their art to be traced. Just assume nobody wants it, basically. So obviously the most important part of art is how you're going to actually go about doing it. Are you going to use actual physical art supplies or are you going to download a program? 
Digital art is easier to make, but you're gonna need an art tablet, a decent enough computer to run the program in the first place, and the program itself, which can cost hundreds. And plus, I say easier to make, um, it's not actually that much easier. <laughs> art is hard. So easy as a term for art is just subjective. As for traditional art, if you're someone who likes smooth or soft looking art, traditional isn't the way to go, but as someone who likes my art crunchy and textured, the organic shape of real brush strokes, watercolor paint fringe, and pencil chalkiness is unmatched by digital art. There's so many mediums for your art that you can use. One of the artists I like is a sculptor, while another uses washi tape for colors, and another will literally just use paint pens on whatever she finds, and it turns out brilliant. Get weird with your art. Experimental shit is how you actually improve, so even if you think this is gonna look weird, just do it anyway. What do you have to lose? I'm gonna get real weird with it. Meanwhile, block the wind. I'm gonna roast this bone. Jesus Christ. If you do want to use digital though, I can't really give you pointers on finding an art tablet since mine is a really crappy outdated one that Wacom doesn't even have any support for anymore, but that's going to run you anywhere from 50 to a couple hundred dollars for a decent one. As for art programs, I was actually lucky enough to find one I liked like basically immediately after MS Paint, but I have tried a couple other ones. Uh, I've had people in the past that I follow that use different ones, so I'll just give my opinions and name some of them. MS Paint. Total garbage. Don't use it even if it comes pre-installed with all computers as of 2020. It literally does not have a single redeeming factor outside nostalgia. Fire Alpaca. It's, uh, it's basic. You can get custom brushes to make it more interesting, and I think it's free, but I used it for about a day and went right back to my main program. It's good for doing line art, from what I remember. GIMP. GIMP apparently has a difficult learning curve, and I've seen people stream using it. It seems to be good for doing smooth painted artwork, but I don't really like shading like that. I don't think it's that interesting. It is free though, but just keep that in mind. It's not good for textures. It is good for like smooth paintings, but yeah. Krita. Krita is actually good for doing painted and textured stuff. An artist I really loved back in the day introduced me to Krita, and although I don't use it personally, I can really appreciate the unique brush tools and functionality of it. Again, I think it's free. Uh, I'm naming the ones that are free and then naming the few actually, like, paid for ones that I can think of. Photoshop. It's really fucking hard to use and really, really expensive. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't like it. I used to use Photoshop for all my backgrounds and without an actual solid blur tool, I had to switch between my main program and Photoshop every two seconds. It's fantastic for having expert level tools, filters, and there's probably millions of custom brushes out there. I used to have one back in the day that was Nicolas Cage's face for some reason. 2014 was really weird, but yeah, basically, you need to already be really experienced with digital art to even attempt to use this, otherwise you're just going to be lost. I've been doing non-MS Paint digital art for almost 10 years, and I still don't know how to use Photoshop properly. Metabang. All the art I see with Metabang is anime stuff. I think it's good for making comics and manga, and has a lot of typical anime art style tools, so if that's your thing, Go on right ahead and try it out. Not my thing though. Paint Tool Sci. Uh, it is my personal favorite program. My copy actually stopped working very recently, so I had to get Paint Tool Sci 2, and I think overall it's the easiest to use. I don't think the brush settings in the original Sci are the best because you can see the seams basically. Like, you'll draw and the brush texture will have squares of the pattern in it, but I think that's fixed in a new one. I haven't noticed that. So I'm just gonna be talking about Psy 1 for this because I, I barely use Psy 2. I've had it for about a week. I like it. There's some things I don't like about it, but that's not for this video. Yeah, like I said, it's not the best for unique brush settings that are really good, but honestly, I've only used two brushes for maybe the past like two years. So maybe I'm not the best person to talk to about that. I just think generally it's the best possible first step to take into digital art if you aren't already experienced. It takes some getting used to with the layers, but I went from a shitty pencil on line paper artwork to MS Paint to Psy with a pretty smooth transition, even without tutorials or help or anything. There's obviously more than that out there, but those are the ones that are most iconic in the art community. I can't really think of any other ones that are super popular, so my tier list would basically be like this for beginners trying to make professional looking stuff. Paint Tool Psy, Krita, Metabing, Photoshop, Fire Alpaca, Gimp, Emma's Paint. 
I can't really give tips on what materials to use for physical artwork since it's highly subjective. I suggest just borrowing supplies from friends and family, look around for tips online from more experienced people, and see what suits you best. Please note, uh, this video is mostly for digital art. I am terrible at traditional art, so this video is meant for people who want to stylize their digital art. I might have to put that in the title or thumbnail or something. Like, you can use the tips that I give for traditional art, it's just you're gonna have to do them a little bit differently because I mentioned a lot of program exclusive things in here. Okay, now we have to start building the style itself. Besides the sketch, the line art is the first thing you want to do. Now, what kind of line art do you want is the question. Most people just use basic medium thickness black lines without any settings or filters change on the pen tool. Like this. And that's fine, but uh, there's so many more options than that. First, experiment if you want thin, medium, or thick lines. You can also do what I do and add extra thick outlines around the very outside of the character to make them stand out from their surroundings, or draw a highlighted outline around them for the same effect. Next, do you want them smooth or sketchy? Maybe wobbly? Do you want pen pressure or no pen pressure at all? What color do you want the lines? You can make them a light color or dark color, or you can make them entirely depend on what color they're surrounded by. Maybe you don't want lines at all, which personally, one of my favorite art styles is paintings with the lines on the inside of all the subjects, but not the outside. Mwah, good stuff. You can change the texture of your lines to be fuzzier or crunchier, maybe more square, and experiment with varying line thicknesses. There's a lot of options to choose from just concerning line art that is kind of crazy, so Look over the examples I gave and see if any of that really sticks out to you. Another thing to consider is your shapes. You could line everything about the same as it's supposed to look, but again, default art stuff is kind of boring. Try to practice doing something like making things swirly, blocky, pointy, squiggly. Try to change the thickness as you draw in certain areas. This part kind of creeps into character design territory, so I won't talk too much about it here, but it also applies to backgrounds, which I'll get into later. Now that you got your lines, or lack thereof, you have to add the colors. I'm not going to tell you specifically how to color things in since you learned that in kindergarten. I'm going to focus more on color picking. I'm going to assume whoever's watching this isn't a professional who puts detailed scenic backgrounds that require certain colors in every single piece they make. I'm also going to assume you haven't picked a specific aesthetic or vibe for your artwork just yet when it comes to the colors. I cannot recommend this enough. I started liking my art infinitely more when I stopped using basic colors and started getting weird with it. What I suggest you do is pick an aesthetic or subculture to cling on to. There's a bunch of them. Tumblr especially has a big selection, so just find pictures you think have appeasing colors and see if they have a tag that ends in core or something. My art personally fits into webcore and vaporwave, but there's a ton of other aesthetics to choose from. There's clowncore, scenecore, cottagecore, a bunch of other ones that don't have core in the name, like just monochrome, pastel, eye strain, stuff like that. Basically, just look through those tags on your website of choice and get a feel for how you want to change up your color schemes. It doesn't have to be that dramatic, like bright neons, if you're just doing basic, like, browns, greens, oranges, stuff like that. But try to, like, slowly change it over time. You'll notice the difference. Something else you can do is take some pictures by artists you like and use the color picker on any paint program on them. Look at the color wheel while you do this. Look at the saturation. Colors in this area are pastel and QT, while colors here are bold and vibrant. The ones down here are moody and mellow, while everything in this area is just, like, basic colors. Not really the interesting. Kind of avoid that part, <laughs> basically. What I did when I first wanted to change how I use color was when drawing my characters, I would put an overlay and multiply layer with the vibe I wanted over top of my own reference and color pick directly from there. I would advise against straight up picking colors from your favorite artists. You can try to mimic it, but that's kind of approaching theft territory, so just be careful. Over time, I just kind of stopped needing the multiply layers and can pick suitable colors from memory. You don't have to make it as extreme as I do, you can vaguely add saturation to colors to make them warmer or find other subtle ways to change the way you color. Basically, just don't do colors like this. I see a lot of beginner artists only ever use basic color wheels and never really stray far outside this particular part of the color wheel. I'm not saying you can't ever do this and it's the worst thing you could possibly do, but I feel like you're really holding yourself back if you restrain yourself and don't get weird with the color. As for shading, you have to decide if you want to go for a comic book style type thing and have the outlines also be the shading, or if you want to have them separate. If you want to go with that ink style, look up different line shading methods like cross hatching or just do this on everything basically. I don't do this personally so I can't give a whole lot of advice there, but there's tons of resources out there to make your art look snazzy. The most important shading tip I can give is unless you're doing the comic book thing, do not shade with gray or black. Oh my god, it looks really bad. 
<laughs> it look, I, I mean, okay, fine. It looks really flat and dull. Even things that are white, gray, or black can be shaded with literally any other color. I don't mean to sound mean, but oh my god. I feel so bad for people when they don't realize that they can totally just be shading with color. Like, uh, look at this, look at this. Doesn't this look infinitely less boring with colored shading? So many beginner artists start out doing this, myself included, and it's so not a good pick at all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess it can look okay in some instances, but I have yet to find an instance. What you want to do next is find out the texture of the shading you want. Do you want it smooth, painy, patterned? Most people either go with no shading at all or smooth shading, so uh, something you can do with smooth shading is give it texture anyway, to be more interesting. Go over it with a textured eraser or color pick the base color and draw over the shading with it. You can also go with a grungy texture or some kind of screen tone. You can also just do smooth shading, it's simpler, but a lot of people can use it very effectively. I am not one of them. <laughs> Experiment with textures and shading types. If you genuinely are not sure how to shade, I saw this trick once in a Rebel Taxi video where he put an oval and a circle over the character and it actually looked kind of decent. Try starting out with that and work from there, just be sure to keep a somewhat consistent light source. Once you figure out the texture of your brush, it's now time for color picking. Again, you have to figure out what colors to shade with. If you're doing a background, they should go along somewhat with the scenery the character is surrounded by. In a forest, make it a warmer color, like yellow, green, maybe orange. In a city, try blues and purples, or red or something. Don't just go with gray or black. If the character is in a well-lit place and is standing next to something reflecting light, have it show up on the character. Something that might help you get more color variety in your art is kind of putting a bunch of colors on the character and blending them together to get a weird rainbowy look. It's experimental and sometimes it doesn't really work out all that great, but it'll help you pick out what colors go well with the colors you already picked. An instance where I think this works out really well is the show Chowder. That's actually where I picked this up from. You can also Google color studies and look at what colors they group together or just take some foam pictures of stuff you see outside that looks cool. Backgrounds, oh god. An artist's worst nightmare, actually putting effort into a background instead of just using a solid color. So backgrounds are like a culmination of everything here, but the thing is, I see a lot of people who make solid color backgrounds or make their pictures transparent when in reality, there's so much more you could be doing, even if you're really lazy like me. <laughs> try drawing little objects fitting the mood floating around your character. You could try a crazy pattern background. Sometimes what I do is modify royalty-free images and pixelate them if they're animals or objects. If they're like a pattern, I'll slap it on the back and change up the colors. It makes your art stand out a little bit more if it didn't have a background at all. Try outlining your characters in a certain color. Maybe even go out and take some phone pictures to use as a background. If you manage to find an aesthetic you liked earlier, certain aesthetics have themes that carry throughout people's renditions of them. Like, Vaporwave has grids and retro patterns, Scenecore has checkerboards and emoticons, Webcore has Windows program bars, pixelated details, and Cottagecore has plants and books. So, see if you can incorporate some of those themes in your own work. Obviously, there's tons of things prevalent in each style, but those are just a couple suggestions. And you don't really need to follow the herd. Like, you could just do whatever you want. Those are just, <laughs> just suggestions. That can apply to the whole video. I don't know why I said that right there. However, if you're someone who's actually looking to do more solid, actual backgrounds with real detail and stuff going on in them, stock images once again can help you. Look at them and try to redraw them for practice. Perspective is difficult and I don't actually have much help there, so you might just want to experiment on your own. Do you like doing closed, cozy spaces or more wide open, whimsical areas? Do you have any specific areas you like drawing the most, like urban environments or nature? There's ways you can stylize things as simple as buildings and trees, even when they're really, honestly, kind of hard to draw. <laughs> Something I picked up from cartoons yet again is when drawing lined characters. Drawing a lineless background or a lined one with different thickness in the characters makes the subject stand out better. Mess around with line thickness in your backgrounds to see what works best. I also think you should try to limit perspectives like uh, these. This isn't super exciting even if it's easy to draw. I mean, unless you're going for a Wes Anderson feel, which he's my favorite director, so you know what, go right on ahead, honestly, I support you. <laughs> but uh, back to scenery. Do you want a crowded, more detailed feel to your pictures, or do you kind of want things simple but effective? Minimalism is totally valid. Crowded things are hard to draw, but it establishes a better mood to kind of have a setting you're able to draw again and again, whether it be bedrooms, forests, snowy places, outer space, underwater. Find something you think suits your characters best and keep at it. Same with perspectives. I know there's an artist I really like. I actually got a commission from them a while back. They tend to draw these like really kind of ominous settings. Like, there's nothing inherently disturbing about them, they just give off this kind of ominous feel. 
and I think that's a great stylization because they take something that you see everywhere basically like cities kind of like front lawns marketplaces and they make them so like <laughs> unique it's even in the picture they drew for me I just I love it and I wanted to mention that most of the artists I follow don't even really draw backgrounds but they Oh, they do fantastic backgrounds. I love them. <laughs> Same with one of the people I mentioned earlier, Victoria Vincent. Uh, she does a lot of YouTube animations, so I, I recommend checking her out because that perspective is exactly what I want to do, but I'm limited to making like crappy, realistic proportion ones that aren't even that good because I'm not that good at perspective. <laughs> this part is my favorite part besides character design. People who aren't you are going to tend to notice the same thing about all your pieces and start linking you with those traits. This is why I've advised so heavily against doing those basic things I mentioned. Part of what made me not like my own art style for years on end was when I'd ask people, is there anything different about my art that makes me stand out? I'd always get the same response. Oh, well of course your art is unique. And then they wouldn't say anything besides that because there wasn't anything different about it. I didn't have any stylization. I noticed people that I've talked to in the past have gone so far as to say they didn't even have an art style, which everyone does, but they felt like their art was completely bare bones and not different enough to earn the term art style. I remember looking at people's galleries with incredibly selective color palettes. They'd only pick colors from a certain part of the color wheel, and their entire gallery would set up this overall mood over the span of years. The vibe was so distinct, and I'd always be like, damn, I wish I could do that. And it wound up kind of happening, <laughs> sort of happening. Uh, I do draw pictures that don't really fit with my overall theme, but I try to keep the pink, purple, blue theme prevalent in my uh, featured gallery on DeviantArt. <laughs> so some examples of personal stylizations I have are obviously the black light colors, the anaglyph and scan light filter I put on almost all my drawings, but they're smaller things. Every time I need white in a picture, I replace it with neon blue, cyan. Instead of doing red mounds like people typically, you know, do because that makes sense, I tend to choose like the character's eye color or the color I link them the most with to be their mouth color. I put in a bunch of weird words and patterns to fill in space and when doing pictures with lines, I add little textures in the hair and fur. Small stylizations like that might not be super noticeable to other people, but if you drew a picture without those things, suddenly people would be like, uh, didn't you used to do this? Didn't you used to draw a little bit differently than that? I don't think you should just pick one of the things I do and put it into your own art. These small stylizations can be anything and add a lot of personality to your stuff. Mess around, experiment, see what you like best. Maybe ask people you know if there's anything that stands out about your art and expand on what they point out. Make it more noticeable in a sea of other people's artwork. I guess this video is almost over. Uh, I hope it's been helpful or gave you a less vague idea of what to do with your art. I looked through a ton of how to develop your art style articles and they were all kind of not helpful, so I tried to be more specific. I wish you luck with your art style and the last bit of advice I'll leave you with is, if you're unhappy with your art, experiment. I just spat everywhere. <laughs> experiment. Something I've noticed is if I just tend to think my art style sucks and I don't change anything about it, I'm just in this art block loop of, man, I don't want to draw because my art sucks, but I also don't really want to change it up. And that just leads to stagnation and like a boring period of time where nothing ever gets done. So if you're like, I don't think my art style can change. I think it's just crappy the way it is and I don't think I can fix it. It's <laughs> just do something different. <laughs> That's all I can say. Just don't be stubborn and keep going with an art style you don't like. Don't feel like your followers are holding you hostage to draw a certain way. You have to make the change yourself to get to a place where you're happy with your art. I'm still not really at that point in my art life yet, but hopefully someday I'll be able to look at something I make and go, hey, that's pretty alright. But for now, I can at least confide in the fact that my art style is, well, mine. Thanks so much for watching. Maybe I'll see you in the next part. It'll be about character designs, mostly like anatomy and poses and stuff. I was also going to post a video on stylization versus actually like bad artwork. So stay tuned for the third part, which I don't know if it'll be in the same series as this, but uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching. I hope I was somewhat helpful. I don't know what I'm talking about basically, and I don't actually have many tips to give, straight up actual tips, so this is just a suggestion video. Uh, like and subscribe for more Minecraft Redstone tutorials.